Matt Potter round out the officiating crew. These two teams played three times last year. Pitt won all three, including the finale in the ACC tournament. First touch for Jalen Lowe. Lowe making his fifth straight start. The tip in by Federico is not there. And by Dongo with the rebound. Starting lineups for Georgia Tech. Dongo scored in double figures in 10 straight. They're still really waiting for Miles Kelly to break out. And Ibrahima Sako makes his second start of the season. That fifth player in the starting lineup for Damon Stoudemire often a revolving door, very NBA-like. Yeah, and a lot of it based on matchups of who they're playing, what the scouting report calls for. But if you like offensive basketball and pace in the three-point line, this should be a great game to tune into. Both these teams rely heavily on the three-point shot and transition. So look for a lot of up-tempo basketball here tonight. No good by Kowasi Reeves, who was a blonde at shoot-around, and now a redhead here for tip time. Starting lineups for Pitt. Carlton Carrington, they call him Bub. He has been one of the top freshmen in the ACC this season. Hinson, seven for seven for three against Duke. Had 24 points in the win, and Federico Federico played well against Georgia Tech in the three games last year. And there is Nate George. Picking up right where he left off the last couple of games. Had an unbelievable performance at Clemson, a double overtime victory. Hit the shot to send it into overtime, made a big one in double overtime. And you can see just playing off the dribble, playing with a lot of confidence, knocking down that tough three. There is Carrington. NBA scouts love his upside. And now Hinson. Pitt's leading score through traffic. Blocked. And it goes to Georgia Tech. George leading the break. Pitt gets back. Kelly from the logo. And anytime you play a team that shoots a lot of threes, as we've seen another one here, pretty good look there for Jalen Lowe. A little breakdown defensively from Georgia Tech. Long shots equals long rebounds. Pitt made a big point today in shoot around. Use those long rebounds to try to start their fast break. George lost it going up against low. Reeves left it short. He may go back to being a blonde. <laughs> yeah, he came, came in to shoot around with blonde hair, showed up at the game with red hair. So uh, based on his performance tonight, we'll have to see what color it is tomorrow. But in that corner, he does not miss very often. Federico, Federico lost it and hit off to a rough start. 0 for 5 from the field and now a turnover. There is Jeff Capel. Their head coach, it's a team that they shot it well in non-conference. Their shooting woes surfaced in league play, but they've actually shot it better on the road than at home. Yeah, you don't see that very often. And we asked him today, said, look, is this just a matter of you guys simply not making shots or is there more to it? And he said, look, I spent a lot of time trying to figure that out. We're getting good looks. We just haven't been able to knock them down. As long as we continue to take good shots, he feels confident his guys can continue to shoot well. Uh, Henson took good shots and he didn't miss on Saturday. He's backing down. Sacco using that girth and you played in the old Big East. Pitt always had a guy in the build of a Blake Henson. Well, Blake Henson is such a matchup problem because he's a terrific three-point shooter. He's not shot it well as of late. Well, at Duke was 7-7, seven seven, but before that was struggling a little bit. But he can do just that. He's a size post up. He's strong. Just a, a tough matchup for anybody trying to defend him. On the run out, it's Zach Austin, the two-handed hammer. And right there on point, turning defense into offense. Got the rebound, one dribble out up the floor, and Zach Austin, a great save by Federico. Zach Austin, one of the best athletes in the ACC, getting way above the rim on that finish. Austin, a transfer from High Point, where he averaged 14 a game the last two years. Also was one of the best shot blockers in the country. George, that doesn't go. Offensive rebound, Reeves. Georgia Tech's a pretty good offensive rebounding team. And Kowasi Reeves, known as a shooter, not necessarily known as somebody who's going to crash the glass hard, but that time just unchecked for and able to get the easy finish. The lob to Austin playing above the rim yet again. you got to like the pace if you're this one. If you're a basketball fan, this is up and down. 
early and a great uh, back pick on that set. The lob, Pitt worked on that set for about five minutes straight and shoot around today and knew they were going to be able to get one. Dongo through traffic, coughs it up. They wanted to make traffic around Dongo. That was an emphasis in practice. Yeah, there were four guys around the ball that time, and they did a good job of getting the deflection, creating the steal. Now Carrington, a four-time ACC Rookie of the Week. Hinson likes this matchup. No help. And Hinson able to draw the foul. Well, we knew this was going to be an offensive battle. And both these teams do it in a variety of ways. Nate George picking up where he left off from last week, knocking down the early three. And on the other end, Zach Austin, very, very energetic personality. And you see that energy and that enthusiasm came out after one of the best road wins they've had in a long time. Just an unbelievable performance in Cameron Indoor. Not an easy place to go in and win, obviously. And, uh, you know, he's had a great career at Pitt, and he's gotten better each year. And, you know, it, it was really interesting watching him today at shoot-around. He just, he's the energy guy for the whole team. And not too often do you see that from your best player, but it just, it was contagious. And he really, it seems like he loves to play basketball, and you just got to love to see that. He was blowing kisses to the Cameron crowd. <laughs> a flock of birds in front of him. Well, not a lot of players get the opportunity to go into Cameron Indoor and get a win, so he uh, he took advantage of every second. Well, he's a guy who was a two-year starter at Ole Miss, then transferred to Iowa State, didn't play in his two seasons there due to a medical condition. So to stay in shape, he's playing pickup at LA Fitness in Orange City, Florida. He said they talked a lot of trash there, and he would talk trash to elevate the intensity of those games. Comes back to Pitt last year was a revelation for the Panthers, and this year the third leading scorer in the ACC. Kyle Sturdivant into the game, and that is Tafara Kapori, the UMass transfer for three. And Georgia Tech, a team that will allow a lot of their guys to shoot with confidence from behind the arc. And Damon Stoudemire says, you know what, if you're open, let it fly. And as a player, you got to love to hear your coach say that. Just give him the ultimate green light, the ultimate confidence. As long as it's a good shot, go ahead and shoot it. Henson backing down George and a lob to Federico. Federico. And that may have looked like an accident, but it wasn't. It works extremely Derek hard. Derek Wittenberg on line one to throw that lob, and Blake Hinson had a chance to, for a little baby jump hook, but he saw Federico cut to the basket and uh, just threw it up there and said, go get it. Claude. And that's Debo Coleman's three, no good. Here comes Lowe. Sturdivant takes it away, the veteran against the Greenhorn. They got two ball handlers in now, Georgia Tech does, with Sturdivant. And the freshman, George. Georgia Tech, a team that will set a lot of ball screens. And Pittsburgh worked hard today on their different coverages. They'll look to switch a lot. They'll look to trap at times. They'll look to go under. So far, doing a pretty good job of communicating. Possession arrow to Georgia Tech on the jump ball. What are the keys to defending those ball screens? Well, communication is where it starts. I mean, if, if you don't talk, you're not going to have any idea what you're doing. And hands high hands on a team that shoots a lot of threes is the next one but it's all about just urgency defense is all about urgency as long as you are the aggressor and the initiator more times than not you're going to be the one that's successful hey george second to the acc to reese beekman in assists finds tyjon claude now here comes coleman shot clock at five kapari Gets free, lets it fly. Offensive rebound, Claude. Sturdivant open and hits. And to me, Kyle Sturdivant is the guy, when he plays well, Georgia Tech plays well. Comes off the bench, but really gives him a spark. Seems like their vocal leader today in shoot around. Very, very capable three point shooter. You see right there, that stroke looks pretty good. That's a much needed bonus for David Stoudemire off that bench. Low, wild shot, the tip. And it comes back to Federico. Henson draws the contact and get the whistle. And now Jamie Lucky blows the whistle. 
They're going to talk to see if a foul was called. Well, I guess the issue is the clock. Yeah, I believe. Did the ball hit the rim? I don't think it hit the rim. I think Georgia Tech actually took possession of it, and so that's why that clock should have reset all the way to 30. Jamie Lucky's going to take a look here at the monitor. Yeah, because that ball, I don't believe, is anywhere near hitting the rim. Blake Henson yeah. trying to draw the foul, and you see, yeah, see, Georgia Tech never actually gained possession. Yeah, possession so was never established. At, yes, should have stayed at 13, which I'm sure it will. But good job there by Georgia Tech. Blake Henson known for that little step back with the shot fake. That time just stayed straight down, went straight up. Good no call there. Now you brought up Kyle Sturdivant in that win against Clemson, 18 points coming off the bench. He flirted with a triple-double in a game against Boston College where uh, Georgia Tech was right there. And that's been the story for Georgia Tech this season. So many times in these conference games, they're right there and just can't close. Virginia, over the weekend, they had an 11-point lead in the first half, and then late in the game, uh, they're trying to come back. Uh, McNeely keeps hitting one three after another, and they could never quite get over the hump. It's a young team learning how to win, learning how to close. Well, we asked Damon Stoudemire today. We said, what's, what's the, the thing the two freshmen really need to, and the team overall, really need to improve on? And he said, learning how to win. It's that simple. You know, when you got a freshman point guard, and by Dongo in the middle is a freshman, a terrific freshman, when you're relying so heavily on them, there's going to be growing pains. And it really is a matter of two or three plays here and there throughout some of these games, losing by six, losing by eight. And they just got to learn how to win games. It's going to be pit basketball, and like we saw, 13 to shoot. There was no shot clock reset. Possession was never established. The ball never hit the rim. So Pitt will inbound. 13 to shoot. Georgia Tech with a one-point lead. Both teams two and five in conference play. Austin, the high point transfer, will send it in. And Guillermo Diaz Graham into the game for Pitt. 25 and blue. Carrington contested, hits. That's why the NBA people love his upside. No question about it. He's got great size for a point guard. You see the stroke right there. That was good defense by Georgia Tech. Shot clock was just simply running low, so Buck Carrington had to shoot it, and it's amazing. When the clock's running low like that, even though you know it's not really maybe a good shot, you know you have to shoot it, so you shoot it loose and with confidence. Yeah, Georgia Tech almost exclusively taking threes. 12 of their 14 shots from beyond the arc. Austin catching release, comes to Gapari. Gapari on the drive, and it's tipped to Ishmael Leggett. Leggett had been in the starting lineup, got hurt, missed a game, and since he's come back, Jalen Lowe has stayed in as the starter. He's played so well, but Leggett gives you something off the bench as a veteran with experience. Yeah, just getting back healthy, I think, is the key for him. You know, he hasn't not necessarily done anything wrong to not get back in the lineup. Just guys in front of him were playing better. Pitt able to draw the foul on Sturdivant. Panthers by two. Almost midway through this first half. The end. Benny Schroff, David Padgett with you. Georgia Tech electing to just take threes. 12 of its 15 field goal attempts from three. Hey, we knew coming into the game, you see the, the, the glaring difference there. And when you're a team that relies very heavily on the three-point line, I mean, it's, it's feast or famine sometimes. Now, conversely, Baidongo is a terrific post player, and so far not one shot attempt in this basketball game. So I have a feeling Damon Stoudemire may have addressed that in this last time out. He says, guys, we got to try to get the ball inside here, maybe play inside to out a little bit more, and some of those threes may open up. Miles Kelly and Baidongo, Georgia Tech's top two scorers, without a point so far. Karen. 
Carrington drives on Kelly. Donga went for the steal, and Carrington draws the foul. You know, the difficult thing about defending a team like Pitt and a team like Georgia Tech, for that matter, is because of the way they shoot the ball and because of the volume of shots that they take, their spacing is very good, so it's hard to help. You don't want to overhelp and then allow a wide open three, and that time, Bob Carrington just put his head down again, low shot clock, and was able to get in the lane to draw the foul going to the free throw line. And Miles Kelly just picked up his second foul. And it looks like he'll stay on. We remind you, two of the top teams in the SEC square off tomorrow night. Number eight, Auburn, who's won 11 in a row, taking on rival Alabama at Coleman Coliseum. No bad blood there. <laughs> well, now Kelly comes to the bench along with Debo Coleman. Dongo puts it on the floor. Spin move and did everything but finish. And we just talked about it, getting him going. A little isolation set there at the top of the key and a pretty good move, just unable to finish with the left hand. But Guillermo Diaz Graham, seven feet. Gonna be tough to score in there over him. Diaz Graham gets the friendly roll, may have shuffled his feet. Yeah, did a good job though of keeping his balance, but Pitt's gonna have to keep taking advantage of, of throwing the ball inside. You got Diaz Graham. Very skilled in there. Obviously, Blank Hinton able to post up as well. Federico, not as much of a post up guy, but still able to finish around the rim. Get a foul here on Pittsburgh on that baseline drive. But, you know, for this Pitt team, who again relies on the three very heavily, priority so far is getting the ball in the lane and trying to, trying to win this game by making a lot of twos. You see, pretty good defense there by Kawasi Reeves, but Diaz Graham just using his length to score over the top and recognizing the height advantage of the mismatch. Yeah, they did a good job early in this game of, of taking advantage of the switches and getting those mismatches and throwing the ball inside. Out of bounds to Pitt. Now George early on has been a little erratic at times. Yeah, you know, made that first three, kind of got him going a little bit, but give Pitt and their defense credit. They've done a very good job of sticking to the scouting report. You know, they were very detailed today going over their game plan and what they wanted to do, and so far, they're doing a very good job of it on the defensive end. Yeah, that time, Diaz Graham had the size advantage, just too many dribbles, and Georgia Tech takes it away. Yeah, you got to recognize right there, Georgia Tech had three guys sitting in the lane, got to use a dribble to bait the defense, draw them in, then kick it out, get a better shot on the opposite side. Tongo with his first basket. You know, and watching him the last couple games, I was blown away at how skilled and how athletic he is for a freshman. You know, a lot of times for freshmen, especially post players, they're very raw. They're just not as polished, but he is really skilled. Can score around the rim, uses his strength, can face you up, and you see that time right there, just put it on the floor, able to finish. A turnover by Pitt. And Jeff Capel raved about this young man today. He said, kind of laughs and where does where did Damon Stoudemire find this young man? You know, just kind of came out of nowhere, a little bit of a diamond in the rough. And you see just really, really skilled, 6'9", good size, good strength, and plays stronger than you would expect for a freshman. Yeah, big assist to assistant coach Carl Hobbs, who had been with Rutgers, recruited Dongo to Rutgers, and then when Damon Stoudemire brought Hobbs over to Georgia Tech, Hobbs convinced Dongo to come with him. Here comes Sturdivant. Offensive rebound, Reeves falling down and gets the whistle. That's the second time here in this first half where Kowasi Reeves has just simply run in from the corner. You know, he's such a great three-point shooter, you kind of forget about him from a blockout standpoint. And the shot goes up and Zach Austin just get caught ball watching a little bit there. Boise Reeves just being aggressive and getting the offensive rebound. Chance to knock down a couple free throws here. Now we showed you the graphic coming out of the last break, the disparity between three-point shots and overall field goal attempts for Georgia Tech. Well, since then, concerted effort to take the ball inside. 
Yeah, you, you don't want to fall in love too much with a three-point shot, no matter how good of a three-point shooting team you are. You know, and Pitts has done a very good job getting out, extending their defense, taking away a lot of those open looks. So you got to have a nice balance of the two. And Damon Stoudemire in that last time out certainly made that point. Said, guys, if we're open, by all means, shoot it. But let's get the ball inside, get to the rim a little bit more, and able to close this lead just a little bit. Hanson wants it. Low, almost lost it. Batted around. Carrington kicks to the corner. Hanson, a long three to beat the shot clock. It's good. He's made his last eight three point shots, and that ties Cam Johnson's school record for most consecutive threes made. That was a good 10 feet behind the three point line, as you see a great finish there by Nate George on the other end. But that looked effortless. I mean, that was Steph Curry type range right there. That was a very impressive three from Blake Henson. Low, the smooth lefty shot, back to back threes by Pitt. They were 10 for 20 from distance against a Duke. Well, and that's the kind of three that Jeff Capel wants. There was a paint touch first. They got the ball in the lane, inside out basketball, get the defense to collapse, and he'll be happy with that shot attempt all day. Dongo cannot finish. Federico the rebound. And jump ball is the call. Possession arrow pit. Pittsburgh, a team that relies very heavily on the three, have a lot of guys that have the women's basketball matchup of the night. Thursday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN and the app. It's the only undefeated D1 team in the nation. Number one, South Carolina taking on Angel Reese, Kim Mulkey, Sequin Blazers, and LSU. Dongo with the block at the rim. Pretty good set there coming out of the timeout by Pittsburgh, and Zach Austin had an open straight line drive to the rim, but a terrific block. Benson meets Sturdivant. George had trouble with it. Still time on the shot clock. Sturdivant zippers inside, high off the window, and gets the home roll. Gets the home roll off the top of the backboard, but a good no call there on the out of bounds. That ball stayed on this side of the, of the backboard, but a nice touch there. That was a little bit of a horse shot. That's a letter. <laughs> Federico turns it over. When we talked about Blake Henson's ability to post up, Guillermo Diaz grabbed their confidence, throwing the ball to inside. You know, just not sure they're quite as confident throwing it into Federico Federico. Not that he can't score in there, but wanted to get the ball reversed to the wing one more time to get a little bit better of an angle to make that post-entry pass. It's hard from the top of the key with that straight-on post-entry pass because naturally the, the offensive player posting up is going to have to step off the block, and it kind of defeats the whole purpose of throwing the ball inside. And the Georgia Tech gives it right back. Yellow Jackets only 3 of 12 from 3, 7 of 21 from the field, and yet... Only a four-point game with six minutes and change to go in this first half. We well, you know it's interesting. After that previous timeout, we talked 12 of their 15 shots have been from three. They had five straight shots from inside the arc after that timeout. So clearly a focal point to try to get the ball to the rim. It was a contested shot by George. Hinson is there to clean. Low, the tip in by Federico, not there. Sturdivant, Kangaroos inside, blocked by Carrington, gets it back, hits the rim, and corralled by Leggett on the baseline. Damon Stoudemire wanted a foul call there. Certainly was a lot of contact, especially on that second chance opportunity there, but. Officials letting them play here early on in this first half. Henson on the drive through the contact. And now we'll get a foul. It's against Henson. An offensive foul. Late call there by Jamie Lucky. Yeah, defender certainly looked like he had good position. Only question was where his feet outside the restricted area. And yeah, good job there by Debo Coleman is stepping in. 
got his feet set. Yeah, he's there. That's a good call by the officials. A little late on the whistle, but I think they got the call right. And, you know, it's gotten harder. There's a big emphasis this offseason with the, the block charge call, trying to eliminate a lot of the slide in at the last second and get the call. So I think they've done a good job of trying to clean that rule up. It's the hardest call in basketball to make by far, but they got that one right right there. And Debo Coleman's probably the one guy, if you need somebody to stand in the tracks with Hinson coming, he's probably the one guy that can do it as Sturdivant nails the three. And again, Kyle Sturdivant coming off that bench, knocking down his second three. And, you know, Georgia Tech is a team, when the ball doesn't stick on offense, they're very, very good. Their ball movement's very impressive. They have a tendency at times, ball will get to a guy, they stop moving a little bit, they stop passing, they try to go a little isolation and just not as successful when they do that. Leggett turns it over, six turnovers for Pitt. Good job there by Pittsburgh in transition, defensively getting back after the turnover. Coleman dips in off the window, didn't get much else. Carrington drives on Sturdivant. There's the double. And Coleman picks up the foul. A cheap foul there at the top of the key. David Stoudemire pleading his case, saying, how about that same call down at the other end? And You know, Pitt had success early of taking advantage of a lot of the switches from Georgia Tech and getting the ball inside. We saw Blank Hinson a couple times early on with a mismatch in the post. and. Now trying to take advantage of the switches up top and drive that ball and get in the lane, but Georgia Tech's done a good job the last few minutes of contesting around the rim and not allowing anything easy. Carrington from 18 knocks it down. He had been in a shooting slump coming into this game, seven for his last 35. Seems to be unlocked tonight. Well, you mentioned it earlier. The, the NBA potential to play at the next level. You just see such good size and the elevation on that mid-range jump shot. I mean, there's not much you can do from a defensive standpoint on shots like that. Low picks up the foul. Georgia Tech to the free throw line when we come back. Off a few rough shooting nights on the season. His numbers for a freshman are terrific and if you're one of the mock draft people and you look at the various draft boards, he is anywhere from top five, top 10, all the way to the second round. There is a wide variance. You would think another year at Pitt could really raise his draft stock and make him a bona fide lottery pick, maybe at worst, but th there is a smoothness to his game. Yeah, that's the perfect word for it is smooth. I mean, knocking down a three earlier, right before the break there, a little mid-range jump shot. And that's the one area I would assume that NBA level type people want to see him improve upon the most from a consistency standpoint. You know, he's got good form. It looks very good coming off of his hand. He just got to be a little bit more consistent with it. But again, he's only a freshman. He's halfway through his freshman season of college basketball with another summer, another off season to work on that. It's only going to continue to improve significantly, but leads the team in assists and Right on cue, a turnover right there. I guess we were talking too highly about him, but you know the, the, the ceiling is is very, very high on that young man. Yeah, his first game with Pitt, triple-double. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. I don't care who you are, but you know that was Pittsburgh's eighth turnover of the game on the season, only average 10 as a team. So he's got to do a better job taking care of the basketball because when they have done so, they've been very efficient. And that's what's keeping Georgia Tech in the game. Good defense by Federico. Dongo has been a non-factor in this first half. Miles Kelly... The Yellow Jackets leading scorer on the bench with two fouls does not have a point in this first half. And you know, it's been Georgia Tech's bench that has kept him in the game. Kyle's third event with eight points off the bench, just keeping it close. And, and they'll get a blocking foul on Kapari. And that move again by Carrington. I know he missed. It's a pretty miss. It is, yeah. And it was just a good move getting downhill to his strong hand, his right hand. And, you know, that right there, that's a good call. And that was the point of emphasis we were talking about earlier. You see, Kapari's just not set yet when Carrington left his feet. The big change this year was when the defender gets his plant foot set to jump. So the, the whatever the last foot to touch the floor is, left or right foot, the defender has to already be set by the time the offensive player 
even goes into his jump. And it's going to be a lot harder to take charges. And you see right there, certainly getting that call right. Eight points for Carrington to lead all Panthers. Sturdivant leads Georgia Tech with eight. Kapari. And here's Carrington. That's rebound at number five. Leggett from deep. Rebound Reeves. Yeah, that's just a, that's a tough shot. Not that he's not capable of making it. See, good transition here. Good ball movement from Georgia Tech. And Reeves, no good. He came into the game shooting 50% from three in conference. Damon stoudemire has got to be pleased with that kind of look. I and mean, that's transition basketball. Four or five passes hit the open guy. Just not able to knock it down. But, you know, Pittsburgh in the half-court defensively has done a good job on the high ball screen. They haven't switched, which has allowed Federico to stay on his man by Dongo. And that has allowed... Pittsburgh did not allow Georgia Tech to get the ball into the lane easily. Hinson goes right at George. It's batted around to Dongo. I think Blake Hinson may have been a little surprised at how open he was right there. Almost too open. Kapari. Corner three not there. Georgia Tech four for 16 from three-point range. Yeah, both teams just ice cold here over these last couple minutes and getting pretty decent looks. Just unable to knock him down and you know, in games like this, when you're not shooting the ball well, you got to rely on your defense. The better defensive team is going to win. You can't let your offense dictate your defense. Carrington's got 11. And again, that's just isolation basketball. Sometimes good offense beats good defense. And Damon Stoudemire's going to get a timeout here with about a minute to go before half. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Georgia Tech has missed its column for Pitt. It's been the eight turnovers. That's what's kept Georgia Tech close. Yellow Jackets have not shot it well from the field or from three. And Georgia Tech has done a decent job of creating second chance opportunities by hitting the offensive glass. You know, when you're not shooting the ball well, you've got to try to create extra opportunities. Kowasi Reeves a couple times crashed in for an offensive rebound. And, you know, it's just when you're a team that relies on perimeter shooting, you just got to put the emphasis on, on taking good shots. You know, sometimes he's going to miss. There's nothing you can do about that, but you just got to take good shots. Dongo puts it on the floor and lays it in for two. You see the skill level again, just isolation, top of the key. Didn't really have anything in the dribble handoff action they were trying to run. And he said, you know what? Sometimes you just got to do it yourself and a good strong finish in the lane over Federico, who's a very good defender. Henson, the tough basket. It's going to be scary where Dongo is a year from now. No question about it. And talking to both these coaches today, I mean, give assistant coach from Georgia Tech, Bonzi Wells, a lot of credit in helping develop him over the course of the season. And, you know, again, he's a guy like Bub Carrington on the other end with, a, with another offseason to work on that skill. The, uh, the potential is limitless. About a three-second differential between game clock and shot clock. Sturdivant pulls up. He's got 10 in the opening half. Final ticks. Henson lets it fly, and it doesn't go. And that takes us to halftime. Henson with nine. Cam Pitt's done a good job of limiting their opportunities to shoot as well. Yeah, and like we mentioned, you know, Miles Kelly picked up two fouls, didn't play much the rest of that first half, so look for him to be aggressive here to start the second half. But this is a guy right here. Five Dongo's really got to get going, a little isolation here to get him the ball on the block, see if they can get him going right here out of the gate. He works against the 6'10 Federico and quickly draws the foul on the junior from Finland. And if you're Federico, Using your size and your length, just wall up. Don't reach. Don't break your plane. Anytime you break your plane and your hands come down even just a little bit, that's going to be an automatic foul. Just use your length to your advantage there. Dongo, as a freshman, the one area he has been inconsistent is at the free throw line, below 60% entering today. Came in averaging 13 points, almost nine rebounds. Fourth in the ACC in rebounding. Looked pretty good on those two right there, but maybe that'll be 
kind of the, the catalyst that gets him going here a little bit, but I love Damon Stoudemire coming out of halftime and saying, we got to get him going. Let's get him a touch on the block right away. Henson using the shot fake. And called for the offensive foul. That's two on Henson. A yeah, great shot fake by Blake Henson, but you got to know you're probably just not going to be able to get all the way to the rim. The defense is just too loaded up, and a great job there by Kowasi Reeves of getting in, getting his feet set. Was there in plenty of time, so good call by the officials. Ball going down the other way, and again, another Pittsburgh turnover. Nine turnovers for Pitt. Here's Kelly looking for his first basket. Going right back to that same set. Try to get Dongo another touch on the block here. Dongo bodies up Federico. Gets deep and gets two. Yeah, good finish there. Pretty good defense. Pretty good footwork by Dongo not to travel. When he catches it off the block like that, I'd like to see him maybe face up a little bit more, but did a good job there of being patient and getting to his spot. So clearly, we know where Georgia Tech's going with the ball inside right away. Austin, baseline, gets clobbered. Here comes Reeves. George has a trailer in Kelly. Reeves catch and shoot the corner three where he is lethal. Timeout Jeff Capel. A 7 0 run out of halftime for Georgia Tech. And this is what Georgia Tech needed coming out of that locker room. Couldn't ask for a better start for Damon Stoudemire's group, but getting the ball inside. Let's play inside to out. Getting out on the break. Great pass to Reeves in the corner. Georgia Tech taking a lead. And his players in college, but they almost did. Both were participants in the 1994 Final Four. Stoudemire and Arizona fell to eventual champion Arkansas in the semifinal. Arkansas then beat right. Capel and Duke in the championship, and that was the Nolan Richardson team with Big Nasty, Corliss Williamson. Scotty Thurman hit that big three toward the end of the championship game. Corey Beck, 40 minutes of hell. Yeah, 40 minutes of hell was too much for both these teams to take on that year and one of the best defensive teams in the history of college basketball by far and if you're a point guard I'm sure Jeff Capel was more than really willing to take on that challenge but you just knew it was going to be a long night playing against the Razorbacks that year. And Jeff Capel flanked by his brother Jason you saw there on the left a moment ago and Damon Stoudemire he's got a few uh, old teammates in the building Bonzi Wells is on staff and We'll get a shot of him here in a moment. Rashid Wallace is in attendance sitting courtside. Those Trailblazer teams that almost got there in the late 90s, early 2000s. Here comes Carrington. Man, there is a lyricism to his game. And a great set there coming out of the timeout. Great ball movement. Jeff Capel had said a couple times earlier in this game the ball was just sticking too much. And that time the ball didn't stop moving. Bob Carrington, no hesitation, putting it on the floor and a great finish at the rim. Here's Miles Kelly inside to Dongo. He'll go to work on Federico. Carrington comes up with a steal. Gets it back from low. Carrington's open. Follows his miss. Low for three. It doesn't go. Low came into this game shooting 41% from three in conference. Two pretty good looks there for Pitt in transition and off the offensive rebound. And again, Georgia Tech just making it a priority. They are getting the ball inside to number 11 in white. That time a turnover. You know, Pittsburgh's gonna make a, a couple adjustments here. You saw the, the trip prior to that one where once the ball goes inside and he puts it on the floor, you don't wanna go right away on the trap give the post player a chance to pass out of it. You want to wait till he dribbles, go right away. Jalen Lowe was able to get a deflection and created that steal. But Georgia Tech got to continue to get the ball inside the Dongo. Federico almost lost it. Looking for help. That's not the guy you want dribbling if you're pit. Nor is it the spot where you want to be without a dribble stuck there in the corner. Great defense by Georgia Tech and only six seconds left here on the shot clock on the underneath out of bounds plays. Low will inbound the reigning ACC Rookie of the Week. Hinson from the corner. And a rebound by Sacco. If Georgia Tech goes back inside to Dongo, we saw the double come 
on an earlier possession this half. How much of that is just to plant that seed in his head? Because in the first half, you didn't really see many double teams. Yeah, but you got to keep getting it to him, though. I mean, you want to almost draw that double team. As a post player, it's a compliment to be doubled in the post because that means the other team doesn't want you to score. But you got you got to know when to pass, but you also got to know when to be aggressive and make your move. You're right here, isolation. Use a dribble to bait the defender. That time, great move. Going away from the defense. Knew the double was going to come from the middle. And just an unbelievable spin on the baseline. And a great finish. That looked like... His assistant coach, Bonzi Wells, back in the day. He did. And he's been working on post moves with Bonzi. It seems every couple of games he adds a new wrinkle to the next scouting report as we get a foul away from the ball. Now, there was a game earlier this year against Boston College where he was showcasing fadeaways and turnarounds, and he knocked down a three. Early in the year, he was a guy working off pick and rolls, offensive rebounds, putbacks, and... He just continues to get better exponentially. Well, down here on the defensive end, because of his athleticism, he's able to switch a lot of ball screens, and that has given Pitt here a little bit of trouble. We see a tough shot there by Leggett. Shot clock again running low, and that's about the fourth time this game where Pitt has been able to knock down a shot at the end of the shot clock. Pretty good defense there by Georgia Tech, just a, a tough shot to, by Leggett. First basket by Leggett, who led Rhode Island in scoring last year. Reeves, the floater, soft touch. Well, and because of his ability to shoot the ball so well, especially from the corner, his favorite spot, you got to be there on the catch. And what Reeves did a great job there of was driving the close out, getting to his right hand, his strong hand. And if you're pit, you got to keep him in the corner and not allow him to drive middle. Henson's got nine coming off that 24 point game. Leggett thought about it. And then forced that one up. Here's George. George down the lane, throws it to her, the rim. And Dongo with a dozen doing most of his damage with eight in the second half. Well, it looked like Nate George was actually trying to throw a lob to Dongo rolling to the basket, but couldn't quite tell if it was a shot or not. But nonetheless, the result was the same. Dongo with the offensive rebound, and Georgia Tech has come out on fire offensively here in the second half. Carrington's had an answer for Pitt. Federico will head to the free throw line. Georgia Tech has its biggest lead of the game. They were down four at the half of five. Five minutes and change into the second half. With quality big men, this is compared to the freshman year numbers of some other notable ACC big men. And remember, Norchad O'Meara played his freshman season at Arkansas State. Yeah, this is pretty good company to be in. Obviously, no telling what the future holds, but if this young man continues to work, has a great tutor in Bonzi Wells sitting over there on the bench, and uh, man, he has just been really, really impressive, not only tonight, but watching a couple of games leading up to this one, I mean, he just, he gives them a different element. He, he gives them the interior presence where they can throw the ball inside and play inside to out, which is only going to help their perimeter shooting ability. He was a bit raw as a prospect coming out of high school. And you know, there were little things. David Stoudemire telling us a story, just watching film and how to watch film and the things you want to look for. But those are things that, by Dongo has a eagerness to learn how to do and do better. It's a guy who's working to make himself into a really good basketball player in this league. Well, it starts with the desire. If you have that and the work ethic, then good things are going to happen. And uh, you know, he certainly seems to be embracing this and has played a big impact for his team. Lowe had the block. Sacco couldn't get the follow. And the battle for the board won by Claude. He's trapped. And it looks like he got a, did he get a timeout? I think it's, it's going to be a turnover. It looks turnover. like it's going to be Pittsburgh's ball. It's caught dead in the corner right there and tried to throw it off the Pittsburgh defender's leg, but instead just threw it out of bounds. Six turnovers now for Georgia Tech. George picks up Lowe, full court. Jalen Lowe, the grandson of the great John Lucas II, former number one pick in the 76th draft. Harrington with good position. 
over Gapori. 15 for Bub Carrington. You know, he had a chance to shoot three different times on that possession. He caught the ball in the block, kicked it out, caught it in the corner, could have shot the three, turned that down, and instead took the toughest of the three options with the pull-up jump shot and make it, made it look really easy. George with an open look and battles out. Offensive rebound, Claude. And two shots coming for the transfer from Western Carolina. And this is the second or third time in this game where we have seen the lost art of the mid-range jump shot from Bub Carrington. I mean, that is just effortless and smooth. And, you know, we talked about it earlier in the first half. If, if he can become a, a knockdown consistent shooter from behind the arc, limitless potential for that young man. So you remember in baseball many years ago where they said batting average didn't matter and it was all walks and on base percentage and then everybody started throwing 95 and all of a sudden, hey, putting the ball in play is a good move and now batting average starts to matter again. You getting the sense we're coming there with the mid-range jumper? Well, I always laugh. Great analogy there with the baseball. I love that. But the I always laugh when people say the analytics, right. you know, in air quotes, show you got to shoot a layup or a three. Okay. What I if think, you're wide open from 15? I think Kevin Durant may have something to say about that. Jimmy Butler, DeMar DeRozan, just to name a few. And Rip Hamilton made a career out of it. Well, if you score 30 points, does it matter where it comes from? It's still 30 points at the end of the day. I mean, I'm not a math major, but 30 points is 30 points no matter how you get it. Well, there is this way of thinking these days that if it's not a three-pointer, if it's not a shot in the paint or a free throw, it's not a good shot. Yeah, and I, I don't subscribe to that theory at all. And there are a lot of coaches that have been very successful playing that way, but it's the new age of basketball. You just got to shoot as many threes as you can, hope to make them, and so on and so forth. Well, Bob Carrington seems to be proving that wrong a little bit here tonight. I know Georgia Tech's winning this basketball game. Oh! Kowasi reads the throw down. Where did that come from? Got to be the hair. The answer at the other end by Diaz Graham. I have a feeling we're going to see that dunk on Sports Center just a couple of times later tonight. My goodness. And he may be a redhead for a few more games. <laughs> can tie with a three. Panthers led by four at the break. Shot clock at eight. Low. Driving on Claude. The basket plus the foul. He showed it against Duke on Saturday. Put into the starting lineup five games ago. Not afraid to take the big shot. We never know what the Sports Center top 10 is going to hold, but I would be shocked if this isn't in there coming up. Kowasi Reeves with the highlight reel reverse dunk on the free throw line, baseline. We got a one point game here in Atlanta. With Guillermo Diaz Graham, the sophomore from the Canary Islands where you played pro basketball has hit a couple of threes afterwards, providing Jeff Cable with some solid minutes off the bench, and uh, he's taken the crowd out of it after they had a moment to rise up. Yeah, much needed boost offensively, and only had two made threes in conference play coming into this game, but knocking down both of those looked really confident doing it. Dongo, how about the way he could catch and finish in midair? Yeah, that was a really impressive finish because he was not necessarily in position to catch that. It was a tough pass. And just a great finish there by Dongo. Diaz Graham colliding, and we get a foul, and he's down. Guillermo Diaz Graham took a pretty hard fall there and trying to drive to that hoop. Let's hope he's okay. Appears to be okay here as we take a look and oh yeah landed awkwardly on that left leg but got up after just a few seconds gonna stay in the game so let's hope he's okay and no 
12 free throws. The foul was on the drive. Here's Carrington. He's got 15 to lead all scores. Over to low. Freshman to freshman. Air ball. Austin saves it. Didn't hit the rim. I don't know if they saw it. Leggett puts it up, and the Rhode Island transfer coming yeah. off the bench and gets a big bucket. And a really heads-up play there. Obviously, it helps when you're right in front of your own bench and everybody's yelling at you that the shot clock is low, but very easy in that situation not realize how much time was left, but a good job by Leggett. Miles Kelly almost turned it over. He still has not scored. Georgia Tech's leading scorer, averaging 15 a game at two fouls in the first half, was on the bench, and it really just hasn't been a factor tonight. You know, it's amazing. It never ceases to fail when you get in early foul trouble like that, how you just can't get into rhythm. No matter what happens throughout the course of the game, you just cannot get into a rhythm. Reeves, the corner three, too much. And a shot clock violation. Diaz Graham tipping the ball. Hey, he's come off the bench and provided some elite minutes. Yeah, and some good energy there on the defensive end and a very good possession defensively for Pittsburgh. Just not allowing anything easy. And certainly been a game of runs here after a little bit of a sloppy first half offensively for both teams. Been a game of runs here in this second half. A couple lead changes. And Blake Henson has been on the bench for Pittsburgh throughout this run of theirs. So curious to see how much long he sits over there on that Pittsburgh bench. Pitts made five of its last six. That one almost went in. Battle for the board. And the foul is against Georgia Tech. We'll get Reeves. The crowd wanted it over the back foul there, but they're going to get Georgia Tech with a grab on Diaz. Graham trying to go up for that rebound, and Pittsburgh starting to get a little momentum here after a little sloppy start to this second half. Fifteen points for Carrington. Lowe's got six to go along with three assists. Entry pass, Diaz Graham, he's got 10. And Diaz Graham worked extremely hard that entire possession of wanting the ball, never stopped. The smaller defender was trying to get in front of him, in front of him, and he just kept moving his feet, showing his hands, and a great pass there by Bob Carrington away from the defense. And Guillermo Diaz Graham has been the offensive right spot here for the Panthers in this second half. George DeSacco, and the foul committed by Guillermo Diaz Graham. About arms and legs flailing when he hits the deck. Yeah, the skill level he possesses is just really impressive, and it's very, very typical of, of, of foreign players, European players, as they work on that skill level at such an early age. And obviously, got to get stronger and get in the weight room, which that'll come over time. But you see, knocking down two threes, easy dunk there. A couple impressive blocks in this game. So, again, another one of these younger Pittsburgh Panthers players that has a lot of potential. Summer 2022, he played for Spain's U-20 team. Could have played for the U-21 team this past summer. Decided to stay at Pitt. And the two things he worked on were strength and conditioning. Got in the weight room, and it may not look like it, but he added about 10, 15 pounds. And he's working really hard right now as we see Leggett not able to knock down that three. They're, Georgia Tech's doing a lot of switching on the ball screens, and they're trying to take advantage of that mismatch in the post, unable to get into there on that last possession. And a foul on the floor. And it's going to be on low, his second. Blake Hinson with the three fouls remains on the pit bench. Sixth team foul on pit, so one more in tech in the bonus. And with this media timeout cut up here pretty quickly, Jeff Cable probably just trying to get through that mark before he puts Blake Hinson back in the game. Coleman from the corner. Got it. And that is what by Dongo brings to this team by being able to throw the ball inside because now all of a sudden you can't play him one-on-one -on -one because he was able to score in here in the second half that time they brought the double great kick opposite 
An extra pass to a wide open Coleman in the corner, knocking down the three. A much needed basket for Georgia Tech. Leggett baseline drive, reverse layup not there. And we'll get a push. Will step aside. Pitt clings to a two point lead on the road. Games, with the exception of the Clemson game last Tuesday when they rallied back late, forced double overtime, were able to win. Now they've had leads in a lot of these games. They had a six point lead in the second half today, unable to close out. Yeah, again, it goes back to when you rely on freshmen as much as they do especially at the point guard position, there's just going to be a bigger learning curve from a growth standpoint on how to close out games, especially in conference play. Conference is a whole different animal. The pressure is higher. The stakes are higher, obviously. And uh, unfortunately, there's nothing you can do to expedite that process. You, these guys just have to go through it. And the Clemson game last week was huge. There's no doubt about it. They were down. They were down nine with under two minutes to go. Came back, tied it. Obviously, went to double overtime, was able to get out of there with a the victory. But... You know, it's, it's just going to be a game-by-game -game situation where the difference between winning and losing can come down to one or two plays. It's, the, the margin is that small. And with Pitt, you saw them withstand and take some haymakers from Duke. They were able to get up off the canvas. They end up winning at Cameron Indoor on Saturday. And I thought a big play in this second half. Oh, Kowasi Reeves had the big dunk. Georgia Tech went up by six, and Pitt responded trying to grow from that win on Saturday on the road at Duke. Well, the very next time down after the, the highlight reel dunk for Pittsburgh, Guillermo Diaz-Graham knocked down a three in transition. And, you know, you'll trade a three for a two any day of the week. And so, you know, you see it. And now Pitt, obviously a little bit more experienced at certain spots, but for them to be able to make that kind of run, especially with Blake Henson sitting on the bench, that's a very welcome sign. Who's now back in this ball game and see if he can get it going here for his team offensively. Low. And the call is going to be a foul against Georgia Tech, says Jamie Lucky. They're going to get Dongo. And clearly just not anywhere in position there. You know, if you're Dongo, I'd like to see just go up and you try to block that shot. It's The odds are against you with, with the new emphasis on the rules of the block charge and trying to take one. Now, we've seen a couple in this game, but... Because of his athleticism and his length, go try to block that. I'd rather see you try to get a foul, at least trying to block the shot in that situation. Seventh team foul against Georgia Tech. We remind you tomorrow, the huddle crew will reveal this season's ACC football schedule. They'll break down each team, including new members Cal, Stanford, and SMU. It's a two-hour special that starts at 5 on ACC Network and ESPN2. Lowe gets one out of two, so... All the fans of current ACC members can decide whether they want to book their flights to Dallas or Berkeley or the Palo Bay Area. Alto. <laughs> I still can't get used to that. It's going to take me a while to get used to those two schools being a part of the ACC. Dongo catches inside. Can't lay it up. Missed the bunny. Low to Diaz. Graham, nice hands by George to poke it away. Yeah, saved the basket there. Great hustle by Nate George, but a great pass by Lowe and rewarding his big man for running the floor. No team has led by more than six tonight. Leggett turbines inside, and Pitt has the largest lead by either team. Yeah, that was a tough finish there by Ishmael Leggett, but that's about the second or third time here in the second half we've seen him put the ball on the floor and be aggressive and able to finish. And that's, that's what we talked about. Getting him back healthy is only going to help this Pitt team as the year goes on. Start at the lob to Dongo. And Jeff Capel very frustrated right here in front of us. Guillermo Diaz-Graham did not need to step up so early to help on that. When you do that, you leave the basket exposed, and that was an easy read for Georgia Tech. Great finish there by Dongo on the lob. Low, who has been brimming with confidence of late, and shows you why. And that's frustration there by Damon Stoudemire and his coaching staff. That's a scouting thing.
Jalen Lowe is left-handed. When he's isolated at the top of the key, you got to force him back to his weak hand, which in that situation would have been his right hand. Miles Kelly wants it. He is without a point. He has not gone scoreless in a game since February of his freshman season, which was a game, coincidentally, against Pitt. It can extend what is its largest lead of the night. And they have the mismatch inside. Kyle Sturdivant guarding Guillermo Diaz Graham. Leggett got the step and then hacked by Kelly, who picks up his third foul. And Ishmael Leggett just putting his head down and saying, I'm going to get to the rim, just unable to stop him and just drawing foul and being aggressive. and. You know, this Pittsburgh team seems to have found a rhythm here. And again, you see him just putting his head down one-on-one -on -one and clearly the contact going to the free throw line. Jeff Capel telling us to shoot around. A Leggett, who had been starting, hurt his shoulder, missed the Louisville game. Jalen Lowe was playing well, and so Lowe stayed in the starting lineup. And uh, Jeff Capel wrestled with that decision leading up to the Duke game. Cameron indoor, tough environment for a freshman. Lowe more than handled it was exceptional on Saturday 17 points a couple of huge threes and if this is your starting lineup with Lowe in there and Leggett coming off the bench Leggett Diaz Graham well, these are players who can provide a spark outside of your starting five now yeah both these teams have gotten very good contributions from their bench tonight Pittsburgh here in the second half and the reason why they've been able to retake this lead largest lead for Pitt Sturdivant from the elbow he's got a dozen yeah, good job there splitting the ball screen. So Blake Hinson jumped out a little too far there. A great read by Kyle Sturdivant. Georgia Tech going zone. I was curious to see if they were going to play this. They've gone to it a little bit more as of late. Try to get Pittsburgh out of their rhythm. Try to stop some of that dribble penetration. Leggett gets inside. Blocked. That's Claude. Sturdivant the other way. Driving on Diaz Graham. And able to draw the foul. Should be a good finish. Pit up by seven. Georgia Tech to the free throw line on the other side. Minutes ago last week at Clemson, came back, tied it, went into double overtime, ended up winning. So they're not going to go away by any stretch of the imagination. For Pitt, you just you got to take care of the basketball. There's been a couple of timely turnovers in this game. Now, they've done a better job here in the second half, but you got to take care of the basketball. you got to be strong. The officials are going to let you play in situations like this. This has been a very physical game. I don't see that changing here over the last couple minutes. So you got to be physical. You got to be strong with the ball on both ends. And uh, the team that normally rebounds the ball, especially on the defensive end, better normally wins games like this. Sturdivant at the free throw line where he's an 87% shooter on the season. The only player left from Georgia Tech's 2021 ACC championship team. Now some pressure. A little full court 2-2-1 two, two, here, trying to slow him down, and Georgia Tech going to stay with this zone. We're successful in that first possession. The only issue you run into is this slows the game down even more, and when you're down... Carrington from 18. He's got 17 on the night. I mean... It, that is like a layup to him, the way he's been shooting that ball tonight. He hasn't missed one of those yet. I mean, he just loves that 20-21 foot pull-up jump shot and a nice high ball screen there against the zone. Active hands by Diaz Graham. He tipped it into the backcourt. Dongo retrieving. Shot clock down to 10. Dongo driving on the Spaniard, and he's got two shots coming. And again, that is the second time in this second half. Guillermo Diaz Graham just goes straight up. As soon as you bring your arms down, they're going to call that a foul. If you go straight up, you're seven feet, you got long arms, just go straight up. You see, straight up, straight up, and then all of a sudden you do that, it's going to be a foul every time. If he makes it over you, he makes it. You can always get a basket back, but you can't get a foul back. Now the clock stops, and Dongo going to the free throw line with a chance to put a couple more points on the board while the clock's not running. Below 60% on the season, two for two tonight. Make or miss here, still a two possession game. 
So Georgia Tech, if they want to, can afford to play a couple more possessions of that zone. Just got to be aware of where Carrington is, obviously. But you got to limit Pitt to one shot at it. You cannot give up an offensive rebound if you're Georgia Tech. Staying with that 2-3 zone. How does Pitt want to attack? But they love to get the side ball screens here, get the overload. That time, Leggett wide open in the corner. And a great extra pass by Carrington. Pitt, Georgia Tech got a little confused, didn't communicate. Just a little overload, send the man through to the corner. 2-1-1, on one, a great extra pass. And a huge three by Ishmael Leggett. That was Jalen Lowe, and it's another big three late in the game by Lowe. Reeves from long distance from Marietta. And a much needed answer there for your Georgia Tech. And still a two possession game here. Georgia Tech going to try to pick up full court coming out of this timeout, try to disrupt Pittsburgh a little bit. You had it right, Jalen Lowe. I got way ahead of myself. I got too excited, but just a great extra pass. Wide open in the corner. Jalen Lowe has not shot the ball well from behind the arc, but a huge answer from Kowasi Reeves on the other end. You see neither team with a foul to give here, so you want to play aggressive defense, but you don't want to send anybody to the foul line, but I have a feeling Georgia Tech probably going to get out of that zone. Pitt scored twice on the last two possessions just trying to pick up man, but again, it comes down to the backboard. Force a tough shot, but you got to limit them to one shot, and then you got to go quick down on the other end because the clock is slowly but surely starting to slip away. And something to remember, neither of these teams, particularly great free throw shooting teams, Pitt especially, coming into the game, 65% from the free throw line in their seven conference games. That's last in the ACC. Full court pressure now. Carrington kept it alive. And you got three quality ball handlers in Leggett, Lowe, and Carrington right now for the Panthers. Shot clock down to 10. Leggett over George. That time, Ishmael Leggett hits the three, and Pittsburgh extends to a nine-point lead. Yeah, and Ishmael Leggett only three made threes, and George with the answer. Out, out, George, the freshman coming up here in crunch time a few moments ago low. Now it's George. Georgia Tech just hoping they can get one stop somehow to try to cut into this lead. Two huge answers. But you can't trade baskets here with under two minutes to go. And that was the end of the Virginia game for Georgia Tech. They needed to come up with that stop and kept on giving up a big three to Isaac McNeely. Carrington has the mismatch here on Claude. Trying to knife through the defense and bailed out by the foul. It's on Tyshawn Claude. Yeah, it was about 25 good seconds of defense there, and Carrington did a good job of not settling for the tough step away three. A lot of times at the end of the clock, you see a guy just bail out and shoot a three, but that time decided to get in the lane, drew enough contact there in the official's eye, going to the free throw line. Take a look here. It looks like he got tripped a little bit by Claude there on that drive. And Carrington, three of four from the free throw line tonight. Claude getting banged up a little bit on that play, but Georgia Tech going with an offensive lineup here. Officials are going to take care of a little bit of a wet spot on the floor there, so maybe a free timeout. For it is teams. a free timeout. 126 to go. Pitt up by six. Panthers playing the second of three straight road games. They beat Duke on Saturday. After this, they go to Miami on Saturday. Canes reeling a little bit, having lost four out of five. And then you got Wake Forest, you got Notre Dame. The Wake's a team. I know they got beat up pretty bad by UNC last night, but I've seen Wake in person a few times. That's a bona fide NCAA tournament team. And now that you've got Damari Monsanto back in the lineup coming off the bench, you've just added one of the best shooters in the ACC. NC State on the road is a tough out. And listen, I, I think a lot of people are doubting Virginia, and yet they somehow keep Tread finding lightly. ways. <laughs> Going to Charlottesville trying to get a win is never an easy thing to do. 
Georgia Tech goes to Blacksburg on Saturday, and then they got that Tobacco Road gauntlet, Carolina at home, NC State and Raleigh, Wake Forest at home as well. That could make or break your season those next four games. No such thing as a night off in conference play, especially in the ACC. It'll be a one and one for Bub Carrington, an 80% free throw shooter. Came into this game in a massive shooting slump. Seven for his previous 35, but six of 10 tonight. And he gets the first free throw. And that makes it a three possession game with less than 90 seconds. Got them both. And two big free throws to make this a three possession game. And if you're Georgia Tech, you gotta go quick. Now you don't have to get a three, but you gotta go quick and get into your full court defense right away. They're gonna get Hinson, that's his fourth foul. And it's gonna be a one and one here for Georgia Tech. Yeah, that's pretty much the last thing you wanted to do if you're Pittsburgh right there. And Blake Hinson knows better. As soon as the official blues whistle, he knew. There's no need for that. If they score, they score, but you don't want to stop the clock and put them to the free throw line. Now they have a chance to score and sub and set up their defense. And Reeves, an outstanding free throw shooter at 83%. <laughs> Both teams now in the double bonus from here on out. Georgia, and what that does is allows Georgia Tech to sub to go offense defense essentially. Take your offensive lineup out put in your better defensive lineup, going to pick up full court here to try to create a quick turnover. Two possession game, 120 and ticking. Dongo picking up Leggett near midcourt. Pittsburgh yeah, going to try to get a high. Telling his players to go deep. Yeah, Pittsburgh going to try to get a high ball screen here to get the switch that they want in the mismatch. Georgia Tech trying to trap. Leggett wiggles out of the corner. Tough shot, knocked away. Here comes Georgia Tech. Kapari to the best, blocked by Diaz Graham. And if the foul is on Diaz Graham, he's done. That's five. His fifth foul, he is fouled out. Two shots and a good for defense the on, wreck. on the other end by Georgia Tech. And good job by Kapari, just being aggressive. No, you got to go quick, a little step through there. and. Got contact, and again, Georgia Tech going to the line. Clock stopped, get a chance to sub. With five fouls here, both teams get a little bit of a free timeout. You know, we mentioned it. Georgia Tech last week down nine at Clemson did not go away, and here again tonight, down six with a chance to cut this to a four-point game with 49 seconds left. So, you know, you don't want to be in this position, but when they are in this position, they do a great job of fighting and clawing their way back. And how interesting for Georgia Tech. Their leading scorer, Miles Kelly, not on the floor. He has a bit of Blutarski tonight. No points. Came in averaging 15 a game, held an eight against Virginia. A couple of early fouls in the first half, never found a rhythm. Yeah, when you when you pick up two fouls like that, it's just so hard to get in the flow of the game. And big miss there by Georgia Tech. Kapari on the season, 10 for 17 from the free throw line entering tonight. He gets one out of two. 69-64, 49 seconds to go. And they get it across. And now the foul by George. And good job there by Pittsburgh with the press offense. Got the ball in the corner, but quickly got it reversed to the other side of the floor. Leggett going to the free throw line, where in conference play, six and nine. But tonight, two and two. Leggett, 85% on the season. Debo Coleman checks in for Georgia Tech. This is a big one. This makes it a three possession game. Missed it. 
Pitt with a smaller defensive lineup here is going to look to switch everything around the perimeter. George has hit some big shots of late. That's a three, air ball. Leggett is fouled down low, and Pitt but with a chance to ice this game from the free throw line. A great play there by Jalen Land of being there. He knew Nate George was going to put that up. Got a hand up, contested it, got a piece of the ball. Great defensive possession there for Pitt. game less than 30 seconds to go start of it no Jeff Capel yelling no foul and Georgia Tech not fouling here final ticks barely got that ball around of court there a lot of times it's easy to relax well Pitt follows up Saturday's win at Cameron Indoor with another road win here at Georgia Tech.